Welcome everyone. Appreciate it. Second meeting of December, last meeting of the year, 2022. Appreciate everyone's attendance. We'll call the meeting to order in about 503. And now I would entertain a motion for adoption of the minutes of December 5th, 2022. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt the minutes. Is there a motion? Is there a second? I'll have a second because I'm the only one who was there. Yes, I was not there. It's only second. Uh, any further discussion regarding these minutes? It looks good to me. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Trustee Moore? Mm -hmm. Yes. Trustee Luther? Yes. A motion for minutes approved? I would now entertain a motion to approve payment of bills of $37,926.92. Break that down. General fund, $607.05. Fire fund, $28,965.85. Cemetery fund thirty dollars, even. EMS billing three thousand seven hundred six dollars thirty four cents. Road and bridge um, four thousand six hundred seventeen dollars and sixty nine cents. Is there a motion? I yes. so move. And a second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding payment? These counts. Only that it's a nice small number. It is a nice small number. <laughs> Very small. Nice and small. Uh, no further comments. May we vote, please? Uh, Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Winter? Yes. Motion to approve payment of bills. Uh, correspondence for the period. We have a welcome to dispute resolution committee, USDA annual reporting letter, collapse strain report from Allison Moody, Rogers Johnson and Griggs about billing rate change for 2023. Um, Lee Sloan. Uh, writing a final opinion in order denying King, about the Kingwood project. We'll obviously talk about that in other uh, business. Uh, YS News request for comment on the same. Uh, again, we'll speak of that in another business. Uh, Collins uh, contact scheduled vacationing chief and assistant chief uh, phone numbers uh, okay. for the period that they're gone in the next 10 days or so. Yeah, oh, and I'll draft, draft solo resolution that were shared by Cedarville Township. Any other correspondence in or out of the period? So Mike was up a little bit, but I was OK. Um, any public comment on the agenda? Any member of the public here this evening would like to comment on the agenda? I don't hear any, so we'll move on. The fire department report, which is uh, not available this evening. We don't have a department personnel to Report. Uh, anything from the board regarding the fire or EMS department they'd like to bring up? Let's see. That would be a no. Moving to item seven would be Cemetery Road. Um, we'll start with Cemetery. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner Goldenauer. Well, since the last meeting we had one burial in Clifton, full burial, and we'll have one Wednesday in Clifton. I'm going to build the board for the electric. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the stuff and build that. Maybe this week, first next week, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Probably get started after the first year. Let's get the permit. So I'm going yeah. down and now take a uh, day to review it or something. Did you say we have to put a pole up? You know, put the pole with the board. Yeah. That's not, he didn't include that in. That was for us to do. What, what pole are you going to use or what? Uh, what two four by fours and some tongue and groove tree and make a panel. Uh -huh. Oh, is that right? Oh, it's just when you don't have a building to put the meter on. It's going to be an outside, it. right? And then we'll have an electric outlet, you know, all weather, we can mm -hmm. use it in the electric. And then we'll trench from the transformer over to there for them. Mm -hmm. But we'll go ahead and set the post and say, get that thing put up. Mm -hmm. And before the ground gets too hot. So will probably work on that you know, later as we mm -hmm. next week. So get that done, and then he'll get started. That's about it. Yeah. Do you have anything for me? Um, I don't know if I've asked you this before, but the two stones that are at the shed? From Oscar. Yeah. We put two foundations in, but they, they changed their mind. They weren't flush enough. Okay. 
Okay. So we take them back out. We've been paid for them. But the stones that are there are going up at, on the notch for graves. Yeah. First they wanted them on yeah. foundation. Now they want this one here and this one here placed in flush. Okay. But we were paid for the bank basically at every point. Should you put the stones in the shed just so I they're not there? Just, I, I, can say, I was going to take them up and set them where they go, but I can just put them in the shed for now. We'll be down there tomorrow. Either, either way, I guess. I mean, we'll, we'll do something tomorrow. I thought maybe put them up where they go for the holidays in case for them. Roger's not mowing now, so yeah. until I can get them to the ground, which right. we could possibly do tomorrow, depending on the weather. Okay. Just, yeah, I'll, they, they've been there for a week or so. Yeah, I just worry when I see stones lying around. Uh, they, people they don't put the natural burial ones there. They don't tell me when they're leaving. Mm -hmm. They show up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care of them. <coughs> something, something to think about for the spring. Um, You know how the village is putting a new water line up to 68, and they'll, you know, they're replacing the two-inch galvanizer. They'll be taking our sidewalk out. Yeah, and they'll be hooking into the frost proof that's there. You know that I think the line that runs from the frost proof underneath the drive over to the pit that's on the other side. That's where the leak is. The leak is before our valve between the frost proof and before our valve. It's not after our battle. It's in that line. The leak that happened to me why we got shut off. Because when they turned it on last time, I had ours shut off and it was leaking. So it's got to be ahead of our battle. So we'll have to dig it up and find it. Okay. Why would you want to Get the frost proof to work and to get frost some water. Frost proof when they turn water. Yeah, I know, but it hasn't been on for like two years. Because of that, yeah, leak. Right. right. So, yeah, we'll fix it. We'll put it. And we can't get the hydrants or the, the faucets or whatever, we can't get those operational again. What I was thinking was we we could trench from the from the pit, our pit, not the frost proof pit. We could just trench that along the road past the shed up to the corner. We put a, and put a frost proof there, or a frost section there, S or whatever. Yeah. At the corner of the road, so that we don't have to go across the uh, blacktop. You know? If ours don't work, huh? If ours won't work, right? Yeah, the ones that exist. In there. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get the leak stuff, and we'll see what if it's leaking after our valve. Then we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Right. We can do it anyway. If want to. Yeah. I guess you could have a bad valve. Well, I shut it off. And you didn't get any water at all it, on our end, but it still leaks. So it's got to be ahead of our valve between there. And they're saying it's leaking. How do they know it's leaking? Well, it runs by the ground. Oh, okay. Just, oh. So I just had them shut the water off so we didn't even build the area. I thought it ponded further down the driveway. It runs down. Runs down oh, it runs down? down. Oh. It comes out right up there. But it's ahead of our, our shut off valve. So it's between the frost proof and our shut off. Is where the leak actually is. So you, think, you think it's on that side of the road? By the valve. By our pit. It's oh, on that side. You think it's on that side? Go ahead and turn it on and let it leak and we'll trace it down. Mm -hmm. it. Okay, well, there's something about the other mm -hmm. Um Would you and Brandon, if you have the time, come and pick up the cart and put it in the shed tomorrow? Yeah, we'll do it in the room. Okay. If you don't, mm -hmm. and we'll take the other one to the shop, I suppose. We'll see if there's room stored in there in mm -hmm. that little building. But yeah, probably get tight. Yeah. Okay. okay. What are the tanks and cages <coughs> back in the salt shed all about? The cages were to put that old crack fill material in, which was laying all over the place. Yeah. So that now it's in there and it can't. Oh, did you put it in the cages? No, the tanks, Andy was going to take them, but I don't think he is. They had chemical in them up under the water by all the trees. That's what he wanted to do. So they just cut them up. You said away. you used to water your hogs with them? No, no, Andy wanted to. Andy Partee wanted to take them to water his hog. But 
they had Kennedy with them, so that's where we Where'd come from? Uh, Brandon got them. Oh. Mm -hmm. so we wanted the cages to put the old crack fill material mm -hmm. in, so we'd be laying all over the Worked out good. But the tanks used to be in the cages, mm -hmm. didn't they? Yeah, that's right. So they yeah. got more than you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody needed a couple of water to water something. If they had fertilizer or some sort of roundup or something, I don't know what we're doing. They came in people and we didn't have the food in there. I just cut them off, get rid of them, maybe. Yeah. The plastic. Yeah. But that's what they were. Okay. All right. I've, they've been sitting back there for a while. I got to ask him what those are. <laughs> he used them while I was gone. He picked all that crack filled material up and cleaned up that. Sold me and stuff. Yeah, he's pretty busy. Yeah, he was. I did that. I wanted to, yeah, that I should let the board know that um, while Dan was away, Brandon was on, on the job. And did he take it upon himself or did you tell him to do the shit? He had a list. Oh. He uh, power was. <laughs> was checking it twice, he too. Had a list, but yeah, uh, he did. And he did a real nice job. Made it, little, look. made it look 100% better. Uh, not more than 100%. I'm surprised that power washer had enough power left. <laughs> he fixed it. He was having trouble with it. He got it over. He did? Yeah. Good. Quite pleased. What else did he do? Or should we talk he about it? He done the in Cemetery Building, cleaned it all up. He worked on the front of the cemetery, or the township building, the salt building. Worked inside, you know. Yeah, he did. He mm -hmm. just the stuff. He knocked a bunch of them out. Okay. Um, anything for Dan regarding cemeteries, Marilyn? Um, I have a few things for natural cemetery, but are you going to be around tomorrow if I can call you? Is it yeah, we have to be great. We'll be down there on cemetery most of the day. Um, but I can call you by phone because I'll be yeah, there. Sure. Is there a good time? 734. <laughs> <laughs> Except during his nap. And wasn't there a natural burial that was in the last couple of weeks? Or is, there, is that the one you're doing now? No, we had one a couple weeks back. Yeah, right. okay. Is that the... About three weeks ago. Yeah, we got to figure out a system for... Never mind. We'll talk. That's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Sure. We used your plywood, by the way. To you did? Yes. <coughs> did it work? Yes. Did you, when, that was just the last time. Like the just, last natural. We got to put two pieces of plywood down with the dirt on it. And it, it Clean it and didn't rub the ground with as much as you Yeah, okay. And that's right there by the scattering garden. My scattering garden. Because mm -hmm. I thought of some, a couple that you've done that you didn't use that maybe? Before. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, the one since, since we talked about the plywood, yeah, that's okay. the only one we've done. Oh, okay. So we tried the plywood trick. And, yeah. Because I didn't want back the truck in there. Yeah, right. But it worked pretty good. Okay. It's about not disturbing the roots of the of the native plants by mm -hmm. scraping mm -hmm. when you scrape the dirt because then you leave a open area that's great for invasives. Mm -hmm. So great. Well, I took the bush hole and locked of the area down with yeah, the bush hole. Yeah, that's, that's what they did over at the I tried to do it just take them off. Mm -hmm. I just used the bush hole back then and a couple locked it down. So it didn't hurt, it didn't disturb the ground. It's kind of mad. Okay. The Thank you. Thank you for doing that. No, the plywood at the township garage. Was it easy? Because the guy at Guitar has got this thing that he built with. So he said, oh, anyway, we can talk tomorrow. Sheet of plywood is pretty simple. Yeah. Anything? Cool. Nope. Road administrator. Brandon went out yesterday for a little salt day. I wondered who was out. Brandon and Brandon. It's all the state he was out, so he took it himself to work. They were callers. Mm -hmm. He you went know, in through some order and I looked around. The state put on enough for the blizzard yeah, yeah, for a century. It was, yeah, it was crunchy going down the street. They yeah, always do. He's only had too bad, a couple of little spots. You know. It was nice of him to take off. And, they never called me, or I would call him. Yeah. You did it on yourself to do that. Cool. Did the fire department put the salt on the sidewalk or do you? No, we did not. They did. Man, there's a lot on that he, too. He shot some on the, on the ramps and stuff. Yeah. And the sidewalk. On the sidewalks here? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's way too much. Yeah. We didn't do that. I wonder if it wears and tears on the... Yes, it does. Yeah. Salt. Yeah, it's, Salt's hard on things, no matter what. Yeah, and there's an abundance of salt for that little bit of snow. Maybe we can uh, give them we, some instructions. We may get a foot of snow here in the next few days. Who knows? They, they keep changing the yeah, amount they, of the yeah, day. Yeah. I'll say that. What is it today? It was one to three, I heard three to five. Yeah. I've heard, yeah, I've heard both those things. I just know it's warmer tomorrow than today <laughs> in the forecast. That's one day at a time. Yeah, because that, that salt, not only does it wear and tear on our sidewalks, but we gave on our feet and we drag it for this. The, yeah. the, no, I, yeah, my, we might want to mention that the, to come. The problem I've learned about recently, realizing that I, now I start looking at buildings and seeing all over the place, is the salt you put on your sidewalk next to your building. If you've got a brick building, the salt gets sucked up in the brick and makes the bricks fall off. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess there may be some way to seal enough that the water doesn't, doesn't go up into the, into the brickwork. But um, I finally figured out that was happening on a building over at Antioch, and then I started seeing it everywhere. I mean, you know, I drove someone to a doctor's office today. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the brick at the corner right by the doors. All falls off. So, yeah. Use it. Main Don't Hall use have any had, more salt than you need to at any rate. Main Hall must have had a heck of a lot of salt <laughs> thrown in. Well, thrown that, that's samples. got some other issues, but, <laughs> but this was north. It was very clear. Mm. Okay. Any other road stuff? No, sir. Sure. I looked through your roads yesterday. Look you pretty good. The roads? Yes. Um, There's some potholes here. A little salty. Stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. Not already got a couple, but not big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep in the back of your mind, uh, maybe what you would want blacktopped next year. Which road or two? We might have enough for two, depending on which ones they are. But something for you to consider before we go on our annual tour. Whenever we go on our annual tour, it seems to be earlier and earlier every year. But that's kind of like those, those solicitations for your end of the year gift and it starts coming in October mm -hmm. and September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else for you? No? I, I did also do a You say you did? Yes. Uh -huh. I didn't see any buttholes, so, so I don't know so. <laughs> Couple. There's incipient potholes, and there are potholes that make the world to buy is ready. Yeah. I must have missed that. Really. Yeah, it's, it's gator. There's other pieces. Uh -huh. we'll play the One I was thinking about was Canyon, where it's starting to pull up there before you get to the curb. On the down on the front, before you bottom here, down the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's on the list, too. Okay. Always good to have a list. Yes, sir. All right, we do have a resolution for uh, regarding the roads. I don't think I will read this, but uh, basically, well, it isn't, it isn't, I'm, I take that back. It's not roads, but it's, it's township. Uh, we're going to do it on the roads. It's resolution 2245. Uh, well, I guess I should go through some of it. Let's try uh, what's going to be a Green County Engineer and the Miami Township Board of Trustees. Agree to the following the trustees desire to delegate authority to the county engineer with regard to the permitting, regulation, and inspection of fiber insulation within Township's jurisdiction. And whereas the engineer has updated regulations and regulations and requirements for fiber insulations within the county, and whereas the engineer provides inspection of fiber insulation work performed by utility companies, and whereas the engineer charges a fee for the performance of these services, of course, to the utility company. Now, therefore, be it resolved that trustees delegate authority over fiber insulation to the engineer and further be it resolved that the engineer will faithfully execute the duties given by this resolution by the trustees to the highest standards based on current knowledge and further be it resolved that this agreement can be terminated by either party within seven days of written notice and further be it resolved that all formal actions by the board of trustees concerning related to the adoption of this resolution are being adopted at a duly called and authorized meeting of the board date set above that's today Eight is not listed. Yeah, uh, we'll put it in there somewhere. And uh, authorized meeting of the board on the date set above, and such a meeting be duly 
called pursuant to and complies with all legal requirements. Thank you, Ashley Caldwell, for approving this as to form. Is there a motion to pass resolution 2245? I so move. And I second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding this? Just a comment. Date now we'll stand this by. is kind of a milestone. Okay. Yeah, it's huge. Bring Fiber lacing through the rural parts of the township. And, and what is the inspection that they're doing? Oh, heavens. Um, the, the accurate location of the wires on the poles at the right height, the right okay. poles, uh, where they're dropped, uh, whether there's little substations so, that so are supposed to be put the, everywhere. The engineer's office has a set of standards that they'll be enforced. Uh -huh. okay. I guess they do. They just said they wrote, they wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. They wrote the standards. And so that resolution is sort of we're adopting the standards that they mm -hmm. that they wrote. I was just because we don't have any in house. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm assuming all of this is still falls under utility, so it isn't permanent in any way. But we can, we we would have, I guess, if they weren't doing it, issued work in the right of way permits for all of that. Yes, but that comes under their right. now jurisdiction. They would so they'll if issue they whatever permits to, if there's won't any issue, issue about it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I just got a call two days ago that wanting to schedule turning on my fiber at my house. Uh, but that, that far along? You're on that pilot project? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's already in the house. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. They just need to oh, let you use it. Yeah. That's good. Right. We're still waiting. And I'm yeah. still waiting. Well, well, I'm not in the area. I can sign up if I well, want. That's on the municipal. Yeah. Yeah. So now we've got everything there. Cool. OK, so yeah. may we vote, please, on resolution 2245. Uh, Trustee Hollister. Yes. Trustee Moore. Yes. Trustee Mitchell. Yes. Resolution 2022-45 approved. Awesome. Anything else for Cemetery Road this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, we'll move to item eight. Uh, fiscal, excuse me, fiscal officer report. We have two additional resolutions for that. Let's Keep them in order. Resolution 46 is the advanced transfer authorization. It reads, whereas I need to subsidize fund 2191 special, 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 special fire levy has presented itself, and whereas it is encouraged to be able to pay the salaries of the personnel of the aforementioned fund, therefore the trustees authorize and transfer $100,000 from the general fund 2191 immediately to you know, the uh, United Mine and Township trustees authorize this officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2246? Yes, I so move. I'll second. With, with, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding resolution 2246? Well, I was surprised to see it. I would, because I had heard where we, what we were going to do. Um, I think it's a good place to take it from. Is that some a decision that? Would that's why. That's why I, that I, I. That's why I appeared at this meeting. I did um, have a conversation with um, the county auditor, and he was um, very informative. And and um, as I was trying to you know figure out how what to do and how to do it because I didn't have enough money to even pay people today, much less we have another pay period between now and the next meeting, which and I can't. I needed yeah. money for that as well. Yeah. And um, he said he recommended um, taking it from the general fund because. Um, and it, it's called. An, it's not just a simple transfer. It's um. It's a, It's called an advanced transfer because then you can. Um, it was relative to when we start to get um, money from the the most recent levy that was passed. Then we can take some of that money and put it right back into the general fund. Oh, cool. And um, he said, you know, he recommended, of course, and you guys understand that with the general fund monies. It has the most flexibility of where we can put it, and you know that kind of stuff. Whereas, if I, because I was thinking of taking it out of the twenty-one ninety eighty-one, you know, yeah. which has some money in it, but but you can't put it back, and that okay. kind of stuff. And it just cool. this seemed like he said this was the cleanest way to do it. Thank you, Margaret. For so I just that. did it, yeah. <laughs> and we don't have to spend it all, you know, whatever in the fire. <laughs> but you know, we just we just needed some money yeah. to okay. get us through for a while. Anyway. Yeah. Any other questions or comments regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please? Trustee Mitchell? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. 
Trustee Hollister. Yes. Resolution 2022-46 is approved. We now have Resolution 2247. This is an amendment of permanent appropriations and relocations. It reads, and I'm going to um, There's a lot. shorten it a bit. <laughs> Whereas the ongoing process uh, accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Um, now, now, therefore, trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Uh, up there was a total, but it's apparently going to be nearly $100,000. No, no, it's not. It's not that much. Yeah, not at all. But um, well, we got seventy-two for the fire fund, so we only need. Yo, oh, yeah. Well, there was that big one there. Twenty-eight. Uh, seventy-two. And I was trying to just get some money, just some money, and then I did um, do the uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul thing down at the bottom. The um, the reallocations. I started that way with it in the day. You know the. Um, Increased salaries by three thousand seven hundred three, but I took it out of machinery, equipment, and furniture. So I did, and then that's how I start. I was starting to pay payroll, and I was trying to find money within the fund to pay. And same with um, you know, and then there's the medical hospitalization that I um, took money from salaries. I started that at the beginning, and whatever. It's just how the bills come across and how I was paying things. And then I got to the point where um, I just needed to, I just needed more money. Uh, there was no more money to take out of the fire fund yeah. and move it anywhere. It just, it was dry. So I had to <laughs> add Trustees some money to it. Trustees authorized this to do so, do so immediately. Is there a um, motion to adopt resolution 2247? I move that we adopt it. I second. I second. I there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding that resolution? Only to point out it's the end of the year and many of these are like increase of line item by ninety dollars, uh, decrease by five hundred and thirteen. Uh, so I can see you're trying to meet the trying, yeah, to get any pennies you know, wherever I can get them, the last where I need weeks. them, and just you know going through the process and it's going to be kind of it's going to be a lot of wiggle room in the you know. Into, the, into 2023 for the fire fund. May we vote, please? Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Hollister? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Uh, resolution 2022 47 is approved. Okay, thank you very much. Do you guys have any other questions for me for this one? We'll move to I item. Do. She asks if we have any more questions. Yes. Oh, do we hear any? Well, then I'm going to wish you a Merry I Christmas. Have oh. No other questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, no and other happy Hanukkah. Yes, and happy Hanukkah and okay. everything. And thank you, and I'll see you so tomorrow. We'll I'll be back here. Zoning Inspector Richard. Okay. Um, I've, since I last reported to you about any anything, I've issued only one permit, and it's only sort of, you might call it half a permit. It's, it's really a permit for some remodeling, which normally we wouldn't have to permit. But uh, it's remodeling to make uh, an office space in a barn for the use of the owners who do remote office whatever, which is all perfectly legitimate, but they're doing a really nice job in the barn. So I wanted a permit that said, these are offices for the use of the owners, so that there isn't any question on, mm -hmm. on down the road. This is on... on uh, yeah. Out on Sniper Road, 4035. Mm -hmm. Then I, the zoning commission at their last meeting continued to, you know, given that that um, regional planning didn't recommend dropping chapter 18.5, I think it is the, the temporary use language. Mm -hmm. They spent the meeting working on how how to rework that <clears throat> and finally ended up it's to see that with more questions and answers and they asked me to ask the prosecutor if it was appropriate to have language in the code that gave no criteria. In other words, no, normally, you know, you you get a permit if you do A, B or C. Okay. And in this case, 
pretty much there's nothing. It's just a temporary permit to do anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they were curious about that because other, they looked at other codes and they were more specific about it and just trying to decide how to, how to work with that. So I put the word into the prosecutor's office and got back a, an email saying, we're working on it. But I haven't heard anything. It's been three weeks or so. The other thing that, that's happening with the Zoning Commission is Which that they... Which prosecutor? Oh. Well, the, the, our, I can't Ashley. remember her name, our representative. Ashley. Ashley. Okay. You know, that's fine, but we're technically not using the prosecutor's office for that oh, okay. very I, I did not know that. Okay. Just because well, of Was that really framed that we aren't using it or that we uh, have... Addition. Uh, another attorney on retainer? Yes, both. I mean, the prosecutor is always available as a resource. Yeah. Well, okay, but so let you, would me have gotten, ask, you would have gotten an answer in, in a day. Well, that, that, that could well have been. And I, I didn't know, A, that the, the situation existed, or B, now that you say this, and it's like, oh, yeah, I maybe remember you all talking about mm -hmm. it, whether I had the authority to call up and ask for something to be mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Okay. So I can pass the same question on yep. on there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get the contact information from somebody. Okay. At the meeting. Uh, the other item is that they were thinking that it would be a good idea to have uh, to in invite the Board of Zoning Appeals members to their organizational meeting in January just to um, sort of. I, there, there, it wasn't that specific, but to talk to them, to have an understanding of uh, what do they see as their relationship with, with the code and the, and the, and the zoning. Um, and what I have done so far on that was just say to the, the BZA members, save this state. It isn't definite, but if it works out, you may, you may get invited. And I've had one person saying they couldn't come on that day, three people saying, no, two people saying they could, one person saying, what's the agenda? <laughs> and no response from a fifth person at this point. Mm -hmm. So the, the zoning commission meets tomorrow and I'll be passing all that on. But anyway, that, that, that's something a little bit unusual that might be happening mm -hmm. in January. What's the date on the January meeting? It would be, the, it's the third Tuesday, I think it's the 17th. It's the third Tuesday in, in January at 7 o'clock. Speaking of, of dates in January, this has nothing to do with zoning. Is the next trustee meeting the 2nd of January? That's I have whatever that Wednesday is. It's going to be the Wednesday. So the 2nd is considered to be a holiday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Wednesday. I just so wasn't sure Monday. whether if New Year's Day is on the Sunday, then you, you make another holiday on the 2nd. Or yes. Okay. And then... Likewise, the next meeting is on Martin Luther King Day, so that'll be on oh, the Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, normally I don't have any trouble figuring out this one. I just wasn't sure yeah. when the official holiday was, so it'll be on Wednesday. I don't just um, have to make sure it gets on the calendar, right? And then I and and I look at the calendar. <laughs> um, this is the second. Yeah, no, this Monday is the up. second. This is the second okay, meeting of this sure. month. No, right. I I had a conflict <laughs> okay. about, uh, two weeks ago. And I decided, since I've had hardly anything to report to you at that meeting, that I would come to this one. It wasn't overlooked. Um, that's all I have to report. I okay. um, Marilyn Dodd, anything for Richard this, this uh, evening? I have nothing. Oh, yeah. I should say, Marilyn and I did a little bit of back and forth on things that need to be yeah. updated or modified on the zoning portion of the website. Mm -hmm. And so that that's good. Yeah. That's in the works. That was very helpful. Your zoning application, and, and I got the full text of the code from mm -hmm. Chris in word form. And so you're and yeah, and you have the tools you need. I have the tools to I need. Work. Okay. And I'm getting good at WordPress. <laughs> so, um, it's interesting, but um, and I'm going to take the like you said, the phone numbers of mm -hmm. or the addresses of people they don't need to be. Yeah, that, um, 
Just, you know, I'm looking through it and just going through everything and seeing what jumps out at me. And one of the things I realized is that we had the, we had the name and addresses of the zoning um, commission, and then we had the names and addresses and phone numbers of the BZA members. And I thought, well, either we add the phone numbers to the zoning commission or we take them away from the BZA. And I thought, we probably should take them away from the BZA. We're not really encouraging people to make calls to individual yeah. members. I think those, those were appeals. put on back in the day when there was not email, right, in right. general. Yeah, and it's no longer probably a good idea to keep public servants' addresses on. Yeah, that, that whole thing is, is another issue. I don't want, want to get into that, but I just saw that the two weren't the same. But I, I, thought, I should probably just It's better to have written system. communications yeah. with those bodies rather than, than over the phone from the general public. As long as you are going to make those changes, do you want to update the terms that are not correct at the moment? There are some that are not correct. Mm -hmm. Huh. Sure. Okay. You going to tell me what they are? Yeah, I've got them in. Okay. Yeah, we, we, I know I worked all that out at some point in the past. And, and well, so, yeah, we updated it at some point in the past, but now they're. Well, I did it now relatively a, recently. I don't. Well, now there's a couple of. And you have, of course, you'll have two people to reinstate all yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah all the end of this one. Yeah. And yeah. we're just, since we put out ads and solicitations for people to become, <clears throat> you know, even. Um, what do you call those alternates and mm -hmm. join and nobody is bitten. So I guess well, they're members for life. <laughs> <laughs> or until they, they they walk out the door, one of the two. Well, well then we right it probably doesn't. For, for the record, I think that it, let's say that is a side comment. They aren't officially members. <laughs> they have five year terms. They they are continuing five year terms. They they. They don't have to say that they want to continue to right. continue. Right. But they have to say they don't want to continue to not continue. Does anybody let them know the terms up? <laughs> no. I, and I, most of them don't have at this point, at least, I don't know about, maybe the BZA folks know because they're still <laughs> relatively, most of them haven't been on the BZA that long, but the Zoning Commission, they're starting to learn it, some of them, because they're newer, but they're, the folks that have been there for a while say, so so, but I say, I say I did that research. I think it's Fred's turn that is up this time, but I'm not positive on that either. And um, it wouldn't hurt to give Fred a call because he's been been spending more time doing other things. I don't. Oh. He hasn't said anything about not continuing. But you know, just are you going to attend the meeting tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be at the meeting tomorrow. Well, if he's there, much ask him. Well, I will if he's there. He wasn't there at the last. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. But, and, and I wasn't aware at the last meeting that this, this, it was his turn. So I'll, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to do that and all that. I'll keep trying to talk people into joining, because I think it'd be great for people to be alternates before we lose somebody, and then they'll have at least a little bit of, yeah, we don't, a little bit of education. It's not as desperate to mm -hmm. fill the spot. Especially if a hearing comes up and somebody's missing or out of time. Okay. Anything else for Richard? I have one thing about zoning, um, and this is actually two things about zoning. One is this is the time of year when we authorize a, uh, um, a an offer of appreciation to our zoning, generally zoning commission members, we have added BZA members in the past couple of years because they've actually done something <laughs> in the past couple of years. So we have uh, given gift certificates, uh, gift cards, excuse me, to, to both commissions. Um, One hundred for the zoning commission uh, because they work monthly and $50 for the BZA. Um, I would like to well, now, wait a minute. i got to do something else first, because I can't ask to do that before we amend the personnel policy to include the use of credit cards to purchase gift cards, because the auditor said we cannot do that without it specifically saying that. So I would like to make a motion to, addem uh, to amend the personnel policy and procedures manual by adding an addendum to section 14 
13.1, the credit card policy, by adding the line with, author with authorization of the Board of Trustees, a township credit card may be used to purchase gift cards as recognition for service to the township. I move that we adopt that. A second? I thought, okay, I thought Chris moved. Oh. No. Oh. I would entertain a motion to. Uh, Sorry, okay. okay. My mistake. So Marilyn moved. Got second, got it. Yeah. Okay. Not second. Okay. Right. Uh, any further discussion regarding that addition or addendum? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, may we vote please? Trustee Mutual. Yes. Uh, Trustee Huang. Yes. Trustee Hollis. Yes. Motion uh, has it been approved. Okay, then I would entertain a motion to, <laughs> to, to use that to use, <laughs> to use to use that uh, uh, ability to purchase gift cards for said members of, of BZA and Zone Commission in appreciation of their work for 2022. And, and I will uh, volunteer, which I generally have for the last 20 or 25 years, to mail out these cards with our thanks and Thank you. the cards. No, this year you have to put on a Santa costume. <laughs> this year I have to do it, this year I have to do it fast or else <laughs> Santa's back, up, back home. Uh, is there a motion? Yes. We have second. a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion regarding this motion? Hearing none, may we vote please? Trustee Marr. Yes. Trustee Hollister. Yes. Trustee Mutcher. Yes. No motion is carried. Thank you all. So that is all for zoning. So we'll move on to uh, item 10, standing committee reports. Uh, MVRPC number one. We have nothing to report. We have nothing to report. Green County Regional Planning Coordinating Commission uh, uh, did meet last month and we went over um, we went over the um, 20, 2040 long range draft, 2040 long range plan, um, which is to be passed. I don't, know, I don't know if it's next, it can't be next Thursday, so it's got to be in January. So hopefully it will finally be passed. It was, it was <coughs> extended for a month at the request of a uh, developer, which I opposed. I didn't think we should let developers make those <laughs> decisions, but I was overruled, so it was done, and apparently there were some suggestions made, which I haven't read yet, but uh, we do meet tomorrow. So we, we, we meet as an executive committee, excuse me, committee tomorrow, but not as a full commission next Tuesday, so this will carry over to the chair. So, is this uh, available through the website? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, Clifton Union Cemetery. Uh, there was no meeting. Uh, the Community Belt Corporation. Uh, there was a meeting, but I was not able to attend. Okay. Was that the visioning workshop, or was that something different? I think visioning workshop was a phrase from an earlier agenda. Okay, so that should come off. Right. Where it says visually workshop. Okay. The Climate Action and Sustainability Project. We are um, holding interviews next week for a, uh, for a coordinator of that project. And uh, I won't get into it. There's some things that, some ways in which um, people collaborating, including um, Tecumseh Land Trust might be able to help us as we begin to think about, I'll get talk to about it later, small solar in the township and um, our need to at least have something in the zone code regarding that. That's all complicated. It doesn't need to be discussed at this meeting. That does sound complicated. <laughs> uh, maybe less complicated it's called than changing natural, the zoning. Uh, natural Barrier yeah. Committee. Natural Barrel Committee, right. yes. Well, we're having our second, we have, we have quarterly meetings, we're having our second meeting January 9th here. Mm -hmm. And um, so far we, we, we are being Dan discussing about a new, a new method of uh, burying, we'll see 
that, that um, these fewer areas for invasive. We're ordering um, some of our original seed we found at the mix to, to so that we could spread it over new burial parts and then we're um, going to um, also grind it in where that foxtail is taking taking root. So mm -hmm. we have that. And um, at the next meeting we're going to discuss um, People at our last meeting were very um, enthusiastic that we could produce something that, that you could give to new, every spring to new burial. Um, new people have joined us about um, reminders what to plant, what not to plant. Don't, you know, oh. don't bring in invasives, you can't put up whirly gigs and things like that. They, they, they had a lot, they had a lot. Of care. Guidelines for ongoing care. That, 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 um, they felt really strong. The people there felt really strongly about that because the ones that showed up were very much rule followers. And Is this different than the rules and regulations which they are issued when they purchase a, a plot? Um, well, we'll review it. I don't know. Some of them thought that people need reminders. Like it's not you, new rules. It's just. Reminding Did rules. you read it in the first and, place? And they, a, lot of them, a lot of them said that uh, when you're in, especially the ones who don't purchase their, their pots ahead of time, when you're in the thick of it, when somebody mm -hmm. has died and you're doing it, you're just not hearing anything. Mm -hmm. Sure. And it, it's yeah. nice to go back and remind them. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Okay, but you're basically reminding them of what there's, what's written that they should or should not be doing now. Right. There's nothing right. where they agreed to change. Yeah, following yeah. the guidelines. Okay, I got you. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move to item 11, which is new business. Um, I don't know, in light of, uh, in light of Margaret's recent resolution on uh, advancing from the general fund into the fire fund, I don't know the benefit of a public meeting on the on the budget or the or the fire budget. Um, Help me out here. It wasn't so much the immediate, so much as Cullen and Denny and I have been speaking of with Cullen's departure. Mm -hmm. You know, are are we staffed the way we want to? Do we have the staffing structure we want? How do we see? You know, um, just taking a look at the whole system at this opportune time of having a turnover of the chief. And uh, Cullen seemed to thought it was a great idea. Um, okay, I must have missed something. It says budget. I mean, not that the budget doesn't have anything to do with it, but I didn't know it was personnel. Well, yeah. I, I could imagine, I, I haven't been part of whatever. People have been led to this, but uh, New Libya's past. I hear more and more references to equipment that's needed. Now the levy that's passed is not for equipment; it's for uh, staff. Uh, I think of sort of looking ahead five years. And where does the annual budget fit into that? Are we setting aside money for ambulance, uh, you know, whatever equipment is going to be needed? Um, so plan, budget planning. Uh, and then as part of that, it could be, well, what, what's our staffing structure? Uh, and then, I, way back when, when I was on village council, uh, we had a big push about um, police overtime and uh, how much that was costing us. Well, these are days of who all over again. Versus, because, versus more, yeah. more staff. Yeah. And we ended up cutting costs by rearranging our, but uh, this may not be transferable to a uh, fire department, mm -hmm. but the village was able to save money by actually hiring more 
we would too if we had anybody we could hire. That's, yeah. that's the problem. But you, you're right, and that would solve some of the problems. I don't have numbers yet because one, Colin and Denny are not here. Two, I'm waiting for the end of the year to so we, we have accurate hours worked and, and hours overtime worked. And I, I want to see those numbers. Um, but I do know that we're running close to $200,000 over what we have to spend on, on personnel. Um, and tell them I both disagreed on that, that number. You, you have the understanding that the new levy was to pay for all of the payroll. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't our understanding at all. Okay. Like we have our original funding, payroll cuts, the cost we're getting out of control. Medical for all the reasons we all know, and we passed another levy. It was. Well, it was but there isn't two hundred thousand dollars in that basic levy. To can, spare. can I interrupt? I think um, what, what, what you're talking about right now illustrates our need, need to get for it. something. A public meeting without, you know, let's say, we should have working documents framing the discussion. And then perhaps a public, well, whatever meeting we would have would have to be public. But uh, am I making sense? Yeah, uh, you're making perfect sense to me. I mean, we never intended that that 670000 new levy was going to be the end all and be all of the pay, payroll. I mean, That's assuming somebody knows that within that 560000 for the 3.8 that we get every five years that there's money available for both payroll and new equipment. Yeah, I'd like to lay it all out, and I'd like to lay it all out all in room. One of the problems is there's all these conversations that people have, and it never, we never all get in the same room and look at it. Uh, so our payroll was all together. Well, you count it differently, Matt. Payroll to me is everything we pay in payroll. Right. I agree. The Medicaid and the pensions and everything. Email, the if, we're, if we have any, I mean, I don't think we have a prayer of getting it down to 60000 or 70000 but if we did, we certainly better do some brainstorming in a room. I mean, so, I'm so arguing I, that write out what you're saying and share it, and we go back and forth before we have a meeting. That is, where are you putting your numbers? Where are you getting your numbers? Uh, that there be advanced work, obviously there be advanced work, but the, uh, already, you know, it sounds, you know, Chris has done some, some work, Marilyn's done some work, and Compare notes on paper first. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I gave my numbers at the joint meeting. I don't know if there's. I have anything more to say. I could t go over them with you, Don. Um, I because I, it's not so. We have our numbers and we have our goals and what we want to spend, but then that gets put alongside the staffing. And how are we going to staff? And how many people do we want in each shift? And how many full-time pension people do we want? And all that, they're the two aren't, the two aren't, they aren't inseparable. So uh, in order to understand a goal we have of, for payroll, we have to understand the options for how about, staffing, right? How about if we said in the next two, three, four meetings, we will have, as a topic, dis discussion, it will be a serial before having a big one uh, solve it all meeting. Well, we're definitely gonna have to have to do that, yes. There's no question about it. I mean, it's, it's upon us. Hey, Marilyn, from your face, it looks um, like I'm frustrated. No, you're not, I'm not frustrated. What you're talking about, I mean, I, I've been gone for a month, 
and yes. a lot of this yes. was talked about before, but I don't remember seeing what you're talking about. Right. Um, and I did figure that one. I did do, we did talk you a lot about it. You send it to me? I mean, no. I mean, yeah, okay, the conversations include, well, Denny and, and Colin said they'd be happy to meet sometime in January. Um, sure, we can continue. Um, I don't. I don't think we're we're at, on the same. Why? Why can't starting a half hour be added to each of the next three or four meetings for this discussion? Because I don't think if we have one meeting, it's all going to be solved. Well. I, I, I think the numbers are clear. I'm not sure I want Colin up here moving. People, people moving, telling, breaking down the staffing of, I don't think that's appropriate for a, a trustees meeting to break down the staffing of the fire department and what the different options are. You keep saying the numbers are clear. I, I'm not sure. See, because they're not clear at all for me. For example, your figures. How many actual hours does that represent of paid time? Yeah, that's how you figure out. You figure it out by how many, how many hours people overtime. should, should yeah, man something around the clock. And how many hours of overtime were paid? And Do you have that number? I don't, but would you let me finish sure, what I was about go, to say? Sure, what I took was how much we paid out of each total for the I year. I understand. But how many hours does that represent? We only have, we have a certain need of hours, not just how many were actually done. According to Colin, we have, we need right. 30,000 hours. Right, so we need to look hours. at what, what we had last year and what we actually need, and then the need is, is subjective as well. Well, it's I mean, eight hours a day, need, whether I mean, you're 24 how many hours a day. Pay, how many salary staff do we need here during the day? Right, that's and in the future, but this represents what happened last year. How many people were on staff last year? Well, maybe our minds work differently, but then when we're in the room, we say, well, this is the reason that happened. With this new thing we've done with overtime, this is the, the, the effect it might have. Um, this is how we could staff differently. I mean, why not, why not look at everything right now? I mean, Cedarville said they keep like three people on every shift. We keep four. Xenia keeps three on every shift. We keep four. I mean, well, we keep all three, those things. Or we keep five, not four. So five this is the kind day. of thing I would like to see. Day, but two, two on of them are right. So there's a whole lot we Three can, at night. I don't understand your resistance to relooking at everything. But I'm, I have advocated relooking at things since day one. I just don't have a baseline to start with yet. And my baseline is. How many hours we pay people? What your baseline was, we have so many hours in a day and we need three people and you put you put a number on it like twelve ninety eight, even though everybody makes a different amount. Well, even though a lot of those hours can, are, co are can, covered by overtime we can get and it's that never number. predictable when the overtime is. And so we never really so when you generate a number about shifts around the clock, it doesn't seem grounded in reality because overtime is so variable and wages are variable. Yes. All those numbers are in the fire department's or the EMS computer, which I don't have access to. But once we get somebody who has access to those numbers, we can ask for a report to have those numbers. So, so your report that you get about numbers assumes how much overtime do you assume? I, I don't have any idea, none and, whatsoever. And it, and it depends. Is somebody out like we have somebody out with a personal family thing now? somebody out because they're using a vacation days yep. at the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Is somebody out because they have COVID? So I don't understand when you want to make a prediction based on so many hours a day at 12.98 an hour, how that in any way is any more telling than what we spent last year. I'm just looking for a frame of reference. I'd like to know if we spent $600,000 on payroll and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on overtime, or did we spend seven hundred fifty thousand dollars on payroll and seventy-five thousand dollars on overtime? I have the faintest idea. Do you? 
for the last three months. I did look at that. It was close to 10 percent for the last three months. But we could we could go back. I, I know how to figure that out. And I would like to see those those memorandums. No, I can. I, I'll do it with pencil and pen. I don't know if Margaret could do it with her computer easier than that. But I could go and get each payroll sheet and see who had how much overtime and add it all up for. Danny's I got mean, that on his computer. Okay. You know, on, on their payroll computer software, but he can knock that out probably. In five so, minutes. do we have a list of questions we want of information we want to gather data? Uh, I just want to know how many hours. Of straight time were paid last year, and how many hours of overtime were paid last year? And it just gives me the starting point. That sounds reasonable. Straight down. We might also look at mutual aid. Were, were there time? How many times could we not answer a call? That's out of my league. I'm not a firefighter. But that's a reason they have a firefighter in the room. Mm -hmm. So Okay, anything further on this well, discussion? Let me just say that total payroll we paid out last year, overtime, everything, pensions, everything, was eight hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. It would be I think our simple goal would be to shrink that number. Yes. So that, that number we can grow over the next we cannot continue with that number. There's just well, no way. Well, actually, we could for a while. No, we could not. We have no carryover. This is what we spent total on, on operating and payroll, and this is what it will now be taking in. And that's, you know, then we have these. It's sustainable, but it's not smart. I mean, it's I'm fascinated by this. Same position you guys are pointing at things I can't see. We yeah, can't buy yeah. anything, and we Let's can't share memos. Okay. Let's have a, a bunch of conversations and then decide on the list of questions we want. Then let's all get in a, in a room and figure it out. Okay. And and the, the simple goal is to make the most of what the cat tax payers have given us. Is if we're, we're not in crisis. We ju I just think we can I have to go I'm at that be, number. Go at that I number. I don't think one super session is going to settle. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So that was new business. Number 12 is old business. First time. I, I, I wait, just, wait a minute. All right. How about the broader budget? Uh, scheduled public session on fire EMS budget. That, isn't that what we were just talking about? And what about. Uh, yeah, I mean, that the second one is a, a totally different one. My experience over the last four years has been Margaret presents a budget and we vote yes. And because think, very little has changed, you know, mm -hmm. in, in our, in our, well, revenues and expenditures year to year. They're pretty constant. That's why we pretty much don't have budget workshops because we don't really need to change you know, how much we spend on electricity. We can't really change that. Or how much we spend on salaries for, for trustees. We can't really change that. Or how much travel and entertainment we do. Or how much the road, you know, it, as long as the road is not spending more than they're taking in, which they never do, they believe. Um, well, I guess I would, I would ask yeah. for a pro forma, um, and maybe we, you know, maybe it'll turn out not not needing, uh, but a uh, a a budget review that we plan on, and we may end up not using the time. Uh, not as a separate meeting, but in our we schedule uh, at the time that the fiscal officer brings the budget to us that we will go through it and review. Well, Chris and I kind of did that last year. It'd be nicer to have it earlier this year. 
Um, it was whatever Margaret can do. And then he went through it and I went through it. We compared notes and and I was really new last year and I didn't know a lot, but I, I, I learned a lot. Um, and I agree there are some things that are just set in the budget that aren't going to change how much we spend on roads and how much we pay for electricity and heat and things, but there are some things that are. And if, if, if everything's so stable, why do we reappropriate money? Because it's almost all in the fire month. department. It's almost always in the fire department. And if there isn't anything, then you know there's a little more tax in the general fund or a little more medical payment in the road fund or something like that. Okay, so it's mostly the fire yeah. department. And yeah, I could agree with that. Most of us are more stable. And it's all fire department. Will the new levy be um, in 2191? Oh, there'll be another, there won't be another fund. There'll be another fund. Because it'll have to be accountable to be only for personnel, of course. So I repeat that when the time comes uh, for approval of the budget, I would like a, the agenda to allow for, um, assume that there will be more detailed discussion and we may end up not having much. I think that's what we did last year. And we can move on. Okay. So, moving on to old business. So, there is a solar in the township update. Who would like to give us that update? Um, I'd like to make specific reference to Ohio Power Siting Board uh, having rejected uh, this past week, um, rejected the Kingwood proposal, uh, and they have the option of appealing that first again to the Ohio Power Siting Board, and then uh, at, at which time we would have the uh, opportunity to make further comment. Mm -hmm. Um, my my first reaction is I don't see a need to, but I wouldn't object if others wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, then they could go to the Ohio Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But this That's is... What the Pardon? That's what they said in the news. I can't hear you. <clears throat> That's what they said that they were going to do in the news. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, they first have to go back again to Ohio Power Center. I hadn't heard that they had said publicly that that's what they mm -hmm. I read it earlier today. today. I read it earlier today. That's okay. Mm. Breaking news. Why is that reporting? So the, the the whole thing isn't dead, isn't settled, but it is uh, a striking difference than other things that have been happening around the state. Um, we got a I an email from Cedarville Township that said, I want to gauge interest in townships filing a joint response to the rehearing request when it comes. This could simply be an argument opposing King's request. I believe we could also affirm our support for the CGA request. So they're, they're interested. They want, to, they want feedback if we want to jointly have a response if there's a if there's a um, appeal. It's not it isn't officially called an appeal. It's called a rehearing. If there, if we want to do a joint response with the other two, so we can talk about that. He's waiting. Well, for I think it's response. Participating with the other townships uh, has been a key all along. So I would support that. Okay, well, Important, however, so I. if it's in, if it's well what we say in it, but also if it's supporting what Citizens for Green Acres uh, is saying, we need to see what they say. I agree with that too. <laughs> um, uh, one other thing that just came from the 
the popular media was, yes, they will, will appeal to the Supreme Court. Where they also said that if they don't get approval for this, they'll come back with a smaller project in the same area. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're not giving up on that site even if they if they can't do the full full scope of the project. But I don't know what all those words <laughs> mean, but. Mm -hmm. um, so how is that affected by Cedarville now as restricted and their whole township? Are they able to come back? Is it considered totally starting from go, I guess, then not, they would be able to use the, the leases in Cedarville township. Now yeah, that makes our job. Mm. But I don't know. Okay. I just think it's important to think about, you know, will if they scale it down, will that change the arguments? Because that, that could be what you would have to anticipate. Well, that's, the road. For that, that's not in the immediate No, but there's, as, you, as you point out, there's two more steps before they would get to that one. Mm -hmm. and they couldn't propose another one before they go through the, those other well, two Well, I don't think, I think they want to, to try to do this one. They're hoping that the Supreme Court will side with them. There still won't have been any analysis done, like which lands are actually bad for the watershed and which lands are, are actually you know, the best. Source. I think, I don't know if I mentioned it, but in, for example, talking with zoning commission members, they get solicitations all the time for solar leases. Yeah, I want to talk it isn't, to you about. It isn't just this one project. Yeah, I want to talk to you about. If it, I understand there's some that are in the northern, northwest of our township. I, I don't know the details. That was I just, just you know, if there's conversation at the meeting. I mean, not the, the meeting, but after the meeting or whatever. Citizens for Green Acres has been monitoring uh, leases that have been registered, uh, and then they have some information about rumors. But they say that the leases in Clark County and there's one just south of Young's. Oh. Uh, but I have been sort of the lead on this in communication with the mm -hmm. other townships and I've been missing in action but I would like to return to that role. Uh, happy to be in close communication with everybody. Is that okay? That sounds great. So yeah, I will agree. reply. Yeah, I think he's, because the last line is done. If you see this, Cedarville Township Trustees send you our thoughts and prayers and hope you get well soon. Right, yes, there, there you go. go. So. And what? That's right. No. There it is. Prayers from Cedarville. Cedarville. Right Brought me out of the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. Cedarville, more, more on solar. Um, Cedarville sent us two drafts. They have the, the draft of um, that they sent to the commissioners, the resolution for restriction. If we wanted to think about that or alter that, um, we had been talking about, and Richard was one of the couple of people at the hearing that brought up, is there any kind of time limit that can be put on that? And um, of course, we got a, a response from our attorney who thought there there doesn't seem any reason why there couldn't. And I talked to um, Jeff about that, and he suggested I talk to Commissioner Gould, which I did this afternoon. And he said the way he would see it working, if we wanted to put a temporary restriction on, that could work. Well, we put a restriction, and then it could be by another resolution can be overturned and that you can't tell from administration to administration what people will do, but he said he'll be, the current Board of Commission really wanted the township to decide what they want for their people. He said he's gonna be there four more years and that he would, he could be trusted to, if we put a restriction on to overturn it, if we, if we desired, if we, if we did a more investigation and more you know, studies like, for example, the um, Miami Belt, the Miami watershed, the Miami water people, Hope Taft, might be thinking specifically of places 
that would be that would be um, not good for for the for the watershed. So but the concept of a moratorium until you've done your research seems to me. Yeah. Sense. The thing is, I don't think we could call it a, a temporary right. moratorium. Yeah, or whatever we, the right we would, word. We would go on faith that we that we would ask for a restriction and go on faith that they when when if we decided to ask them to remove the restriction that they would. So that's where it stands right now. He said that would be possible. So I've got two other things I wanted to say. One is uh, Cedarville Township did uh, adopt. Uh, zoning code changes regarding future uh, smaller scale solar. Mm -hmm. We might include that in our uh, future uh, discussions. Uh, and I got approached by staff at MVRP, no, staff at Five Rivers Metro Parks. Uh, well, it was Eric Sauer who volunteered uh, a lot of technical mm -hmm. uh, testimony uh, in our uh, statements to, about Kingwood. Uh, he's trying to organize a group that would make recommendations to and consult with MBRPC. Uh, to look at regional solar needs, opportunities, standards, uh, not necessarily utility scale, uh, but this fits in with some of our other discussions that we should be looking you know, at the region, what, what's optimum, what's desirable, what's, uh, how do you compare strip mine land to mm -hmm. uh, active premium farmland. Um, so it, I, I feel like the whole topic is, is blooming. When, when I talked to Cedarville, Jeff, he said he, they passed a resolution to, for a moratorium on small scale solar, 50 megawatts. To, for one year to give them time to update their code. Well, they have already updated their okay, code. They yeah. updated more, but they did okay. pass something so, about two years ago. And he said the, the reason. I said, well, why? If you if you don't want solar, why why do you why don't you just not leave, leave it out of your code? And he said because if somebody wants to build a small scale solar and and we have no regulate we have no guidelines. It's just a black and white appeal to our decision, whereas if we have guidelines in writing, um, they would have to adhere to them. So that's something you we say should kind of If you don't have guidelines, make the decision making gets to be black and white. done by a couple of people. Yeah. So I got a copy of theirs. I mean, we, want, we might want to consider a moratorium when we do the, the task, I won't say gargantuan task, because I have no idea how big of a task it would be to, whether we could get assistance on that or um, see what I other townships are doing. A couple of years ago, regional planning handed out some, you know, boilerplate solar, you know, zoning, but I don't remember whether it was talking very much about size of the, of the installations. But what we're it was really talking smaller. about is, is the transition between solar for your use on your property and doing a commercial activity. And it's, it's that, that simple. You know, and, and there's nothing magic about solar as a commercial activity and, and many, many other commercial activities. And so your point is? We're opening Pandora's box. If we start to say, oh yes, you can have a 50 megawatt small solar facility. Yeah, that's 50 megawatts is still huge, but, 
25 megawatts, whatever it is. How are we open to Because we're changing our zoning from only allowing... But you just said if we don't put guidelines in, a couple people well, will right. make a decision. But that, that if, if someone somehow can challenge the zoning, okay, because and, we and that decision is now no longer in the hands of, of you know, issuing a permit or, or whatever. But the, what, what you can have is something that's vague, right? That we, you have, you have to be specific about what you can do and what you can't do. And we don't, I mean, honestly, I guess you could say, how do I decide whether to let someone put up solar panels on their house or not? Okay, well, because it's not a commercial activity. When they're, they're, it's the same as I go regulate it, they go and buy themselves a generator. That, that to me, there's a fairly clear boundary. But when you cross that boundary to generating more electricity than you're using, there's, that's, that's the line that, that I have to work with right now. We could try to write it out more specifically than that. Well, obviously we all need more education on what's coming, and you're seeing some of it in, in Green County Regional Planning, right? Mm -hmm. Several, I, I haven't studied what's coming across your desk there, but I don't know. We probably, we shouldn't get into night, we just have to Three or four townships have adopted to this point, and a couple more have have pending uh, zoning resolutions that are too vague to satisfy regional planning's um, could, you know, ability or or desire to recommend that they be adopted. And, you know, they're just a little too broad or a little too vague, so they want them tightened up before uh, they move along. So those are on hold. So they, when you say two or three have adopted, they've adopted um, some change in the code that has to do with solar. Yeah, the guidelines for many commercial, right. mm -hmm. many commercial stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything under fifty. Oh, so I mean, you got to keep in mind, you know, a lot of solar installations. I mean, um, people's houses, they're making more than they're using, so they're pumping it back into the grid and and. and and making that make but are they on the average over the whole year doing that? I, well, I mean, are they at the point where the electric company is paying them? No, we're not paying them, but they've reduced their their costs. Yeah, they which reduce is, their costs, but if they don't get to the point where they're getting money. But, yeah, but okay. they are selling it back to them. No, I understand that. I mean, the electric company is buying it from them. But we don't regulate. I mean, we don't give guidelines for that no. scale. Uh, yeah. No. Period. All right. So, what's your take, Chris? That we need. Um, well, we could talk to that later. Maybe what you're seeing at regional planning. If we, if we. Well, the, there's, all there's, too there's two parts of it. There are regulations, and we could look at what other people have put, put together. Okay. But then there's the the philosophy behind it. Why do we want to make that change? And you can have active agriculture on the exact same land that is active solar, so-called, well, one term is agrivoltaics. Uh, it depends what the exact nature of the agriculture is. Right. And then, so there's zoning about, could be zoning about that. All right. What's the learn? Let's not forget that this is a process through our zoning commission. Yes. Right. It's not going to be driven by us, whether we want it to or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that brings up what our, what our zoning, what guides our zoning commission, which is the comprehensive land use plan, and mm -hmm. that's driven by people, mm -hmm. and we don't know, and all these things are new, mm -hmm. and so we don't really have a. No, and, and, thing at what people. and our comprehensive plan with basic good planning practice or whatever probably is up for review. Yeah, it's a dozen years old or, or more, something like that. Yeah, and I think they recommend you know at least looking at it every ten years. Yeah. Go ahead. 
I may entertain, if, if somebody came to you tomorrow and said, I'd like to do a... Um, a 40 megawatt? A, a, no, a, a 5 megawatt little situation, which is a pretty big... There have been 25, 30 acres. Okay. And um, you would say, I'm sorry, that we, Arizona Code does not allow that. That's a I commercial think, enterprise. That would, I mean, I would ask them what they were doing, what were going to do with the electricity. Well, that's a lot of electricity, so. Yeah. So, so I would say no. And then, what, are, what could they appeal then? No. Okay. Okay. Just, I was curious about that. I mean, unless you somehow can convince somebody that that's not a commercial activity, but our, I mean, you know, we a have non separate zones. Non-agricultural. Non-agricultural. We have, you know, commercial zone. We have industrial zoning. We have spaces for doing those things. Is it that they're prohibited? They're, the, the whole idea of zoning is some things you can do some places and some things you can do other places. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, let me see if there's anything else. Oh, um, Don, you might be interested. I talked to Bath Township at, at the <laughs> Christmas party. Um, they are, they seem further behind on this than we are. I hope they're not watching. Um, they're having what they call an expert come talk to them on January 9th. I have another commitment on January 9th. And I, I wondered who the expert was and whether an expert from industry or an expert from citizens groups or an expert from wherever. But January, it might be nice to, um, to go see what they're, what they're thinking. I doubt that I'm going to go. Okay. All right. Cool. That township did do some talking about smaller scale, you know, in between scale, whatever we're calling them, solar installations several years ago. I can remember conversation at the zoning um, inspectors meeting at Regional Planning about their, you know, how to deal with somebody wanting to do a couple of acres of, of panels or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I mean, I just remember it was brought up. I don't remember what the, and resolution was, but it isn't the first time they they thought about it. And they they were concerned, you know, immediately about does that have any impact on airplanes and the reflecting light and you know the kind of special concerns that Fairborn has. Um, so it's, it's um, not entirely new, but, it, but it's coming from a different perspective now. Yeah. Anything further on this? To be continued. Whether we like it or not. Our second point is uh, to update cemetery activity. I don't know what I meant by that. I can't read your mind, I don't know. How is this different than the cemetery report? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, moving along. Our Unless there's something you're doing out there that we don't know about. Oh, of course there's something to report on. Our new cart is here. Yeah. And <laughs> you beautiful. didn't notice it in the lobby. Did you see it? I didn't know what I was looking at. <laughs> it's, it is a cart to, for our natural burials. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful cart so that um, we... To transport bodies to graves. Elegantly. Mm -hmm. Elegantly. Well, I'm going to look harder when I go out there. So that's must be, that must be out. what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have reclassification of fire EMS employees per Department of Labor. I know what that means, but I don't have any resolutions or paperwork or anything about that in front of me. Is there, does it exist? Well, um, I mean, I know it exists, but does it exist for us? Well. Denny said that he, he would he would produce that. I I I just wanted to bring it up because I I wanted to make sure we were all on the same page that that should be done by resolution. True. Okay. I thought we were on a different page with that because I thought you had said that could be an internal matter and it seemed like we ought to do it by resolution so that it's official. Okay. So now he's gone till the first of the year. So yeah. So okay. He won't be. Right. 
right away. I mean, right. right. Okay. So that's why it's under old. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I didn't mean for to take take action tonight just to make sure we were all on the same page. Oh. That. Okay. Uh, anything else for the board? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn until January 4th, 2023. I second. I mean, I, I move that we adjourn. I, I second. We, we have a motion and a second. We shall be adjourned by acclamation. Richard, good night. <laughs>